Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to episode 29 of the WWE 2009 TW 2013 Let's Play. It's time for our ECW Smackdown Doubleheader in the first week of February as we continue on our road to the Elimination Chamber. So again, just establishing some feuds. Um, on ECW it's more telling a story of what's happening on here rather than where it's going to be at the pay-per-view. But that will probably, in time, lead to that... Um, What's going to happen at the pay per view. At the same time, hopefully, a good show there, hopefully, a good show for SmackDown. Both shows are going to be booked at the Pepsi Center in the Midwest. I hadn't booked a show there since December, so I thought that made perfect sense. One other small thing you note um, if you look at the notable other factors, Joey Mercury bring in free alcohol and Caval bring in free alcohol. Joey Mercury, obviously, straight edge and, and real life in this society, and obviously, had alcohol problems back then. Caval, who's currently in a straight edge society, and he's given in free alcohol, which is I think that's pretty ironic, given the stable they're in. But um, eight segments here, which will hopefully tell a decent story, and two pre-show segments for ECW. So let's crack on with the show. So we start off in a bout that featured solid in reaction, but non-existent crowd heat. Fergal Devitt defeated Joy Mercury in 6.30 by pinfall, with Shingatha's Prince, Prince's throne. Probably should change that finisher name since he's going to be cha obviously changing character completely here. This was just an F plus 16. Joey Mercury was off his game. Uh, obviously, the crowd are going to be turned off because it was two jobbers, but again, it's how we're going to build Fergal up and the announcer quality and color commentary gave the match a boost. The match did bring the crowd mid down, but to be expected. No skill improvements and the dirt sheets just have mostly negatives for Joey Mercury. Joey Mercury. In our second dark match, uh, an extremely short match, Cesaro defeated Tyler Rex in 3.58 by pinfall with a roaring European uppercut. This was a D41. Usual things about the commentary, no skill improvements and your usual inconsistency and holding back. So Cesaro picks up the win there as we continue his rise up basically the, the roster and up the card. So we start off. Uh, the actual show and about it featured solid in action but non existent crowd heat. Yoshitatsu and Tommy Jr. defeated Dean Ambrose and Seth, uh, Seth Rollins in 726 when Tommy Jr. defeated Dean Ambrose by pinfall with a Death Valley driver. This was a D plus 50. Unfortunately, um, Ambrose is still an opener so it's very hard to get him over at the moment. So that's why we had them lose. But only notable factors were Yoshitatsu off his game. Seth Rollins improving his performance skills and they get there. Ambrose with a few Rollins, the length, but again, we just thought we'd give them a decent run out there in a bit of time. We then see Wade Barrett backstage with Paul Heyman and they have an item which is on a table and it's covered up. So what is this item for later on? Well it's a C plus 68 for this segment between these two. So pretty decent there. And the match had some good action, but not much in the way of heat. Sami Zayn defeated the Hurricane in 729 by pinfall with a brain buster. D plus 48. Again, building up the Sami Zayn momentum. The Hurricane's improving rumble skills, the negatives there. Both guys holding back. Low morale, drinking habit of the Hurricane. Plus the booking decisions, but again, that's how we're going to build Sami Zayn up. An extremely short match, Kevin Steen. Defeated Tomko in 3.42 by a package pile driver. This was a D46. Tomko and Kevin Steen had great chemistry. Shame it only got a D46. No skill improvements there, just another match to get Kevin Steen some momentum. Negatives there, both guys holding back in the length as well. Plus the experience of the announced team, which is always to be expected on ECW. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce that of this evening, Tiffany have, has been relieved of her duties and the new face of this brand is none other than me, Paul Heyman. So Heyman's announcing he's taking over ECW. Tiffany's been relieved of her duties and it's all back in his hands with a B-72 written there. Literally had no need for Tiffany so that was the quickest way to write her off the television. After this, in a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat, Daniel Bryan defeated Alex Shelley in 8.44 by pinball for Dragon Suplex. The C-58, and that's then with good chemistry. 
At least Shelly's improving performance skills. I would have hoped that they get a better rating. Negatives. Both guys holding back. Inconsistency of Alex Shelley. And just lowering the crowd's mood. But of course we'll pick that back up eventually. Then Paul Heyman and Wade Barrett came out for another promo. It's much for the Paul Heyman show. I hate to say I told you so. But ladies and gentlemen, I told you so. I stand before you. Not only with the new ECW champion. But as a leader of this new generation. Not only today do we take over ECW. But we kill it. The extreme in ECW has sadly been taken away for a long, long time, and it's time for a change. So this change happens now. So as of this moment, ECW is dead. Welcome to the next generation of wrestling. Welcome to NXT and your new NXT champion, Wade Barrett. This will not be the WWE you're used to. You're used to. This will be something new. This is your future. This is the future of professional wrestling. And yes, I said wrestling. A naughty lob in this industry, this, or in this company, this is NXT. So Wade Barrett is going to become the new champion. If he can defeat Shelton Benjamin, which is still to come, will he be the next generation champion? So B is minus 72 there. No skill improvements. Again, pretty decent. And that leads us up to our main event. Even though it disappointed, I had to protect Shelton Benjamin. Well, from a storyline perspective, it makes sense. And about to feature great action, but not much in the way of heat. Wade Barrett defeated Shelton Benjamin in 1356 with Wasteland, following interference from Kevin Steen. During the match, we also saw Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn attack Shelton Benjamin. Wade Barrett wins the ECW World Title, which is now going to become the NXT World Championship. Just a C minus 56, which is a shame, but I think we had to protect Shelton to put Wade over, so uh, it's probably lowered the rating a little bit. Uh, the Shelton Barrett storyline continues. Good work by Heyman, the usual, no skill improvements. And the negatives there just for booking decisions in the title prestige, but we'll sort that out over time. Overall, a C minus 59. There are no specific comments to make about the show. The story basically told here was that, yeah, NXT is taking over, the Nexus is taking over, Heyman's going to lead the way, and Barrett and company are going to lead this brand from now on. And that will take us in to the booking of SmackDown. So I'm going to go and book this, guys, and we'll be right back. So here we are, guys, with the SmackDown portion of this episode. Again, building towards the Elimination Chamber. Um, the chances are it's more than likely going to be the SmackDown roster who partake in the Elimination Chamber. So we've got six weeks to build up to that and other matches that we would like to put on the card um, as we head towards there. So yeah, ten segments today, but then 88 minutes of the allocated time plus two pre-show matches. Let's go! So it turns out we've got an attendance of 17,511 at the Pepsi Center. And our first dark match, in an extremely short match, the Hart Dynasty defeated Master J and Wang Yang in 3.35 when Tyson Kidd defeated Slam Master J by pinfall with a springboard heart attack. This got a C60 rating, which is pretty okay considering the, the length of time the match took, uh, match took, basically. Jimmy Wang Yang was off his game. Natalia did some good work at ringside. The always excellent chemistry between Hart, uh, Hart Smith and Kid, and Crime Time storyline, because we've all probably put these two back in the tag division, so that's why I've just kept that storyline running. David Hart Smith improves his technical and his flying skills, and the dirt sheet just says the old inconsistency and holding back negatives. Our second match, and about the featured great action and a good crowd, CM Punk defeated our troop. And 10 of them with the Pepsi Plunge. B-77, no road agent report, no skill improvements, and negatives here are just basically for holding back and motivation. We start Smackdown with Chris Jericho and the Big Show. Jericho says, now in case you didn't notice, but on Monday Night Raw, Big Show and myself did not get our rematch for the WWE Tag Team Championships. This is a disgrace, and this is something I expect to be amended on SmackDown. We were cheated in the match and we are without doubt the best tag team in the world today. Teddy Long then comes out and he says, 
Holla, holla, holla. Now, Jericho, you're right. You make sure you do get a rematch for the tag team titles. But not tonight. Tonight, players, I feel like you need a cheer up match to prepare. So you will take on the team of Christian and the reigning world heavyweight champion, The Undertaker. And of course, Teddy Longland with Holla Holla, Jericho and Big Show look pissed as our main event is set for tonight. B81, delighted with that. Good old way to open the show. Uh, only negative is Teddy Long's low morale. So our first match of the evening, an extremely short match, Batista defeated Kung Funaki in 3.53 with a Spinebuster. So a C65, just a quick squash match to put Batista on television. And yeah, just as, as what it is basically. Could have actually got higher if it wasn't for low morale. And the match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat. John Morrison defeated Mike Knox in 6.31 with a Moonlight Drive. The chemistry between these two and it showed with a B-77. So, really happy with that. And Morrison needs a couple of wins to get some momentum, so a good victory there. Mike Knox is improving his performance skills, is always a bonus as well. And very few negatives there. We then see a video from during the week where Crime Time have been back home in Brooklyn, celebrating their title win at the Royal Rumble. They're bringing the hood to you. That was terrible, but yeah. C plus 66, uh, just a, a celebration segment for the new tag team champions, something that they should have been in real life in my opinion. And they're, they're in tag team action, and a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat. Crime Time defeated Caval and Luke Gallows in 10.30, we Shad defeated Caval by Pinfall with an STO. B-76, so very good rating, um, considering again it's the mid card. Match Striker and Joy Styles working well, Luke Gallows is improving in Rumble skills. The dirt sheet just has negatives for every man holding back and the inconsistency of Caval, so they're very happy with that match. An extremely short match, Dolph Ziggler defeated Finlay in 353 by pinfall with a zigzag. I just needed to put Ziggler in the show, so squash match here. A disappointing C61. Ziggler improves his performance skills and the negatives are Finlay's declining physical ability, his low morale and just the length of the match. But suppose we can accept that. And about the featured great action and a good crowd, Jeff Hardy defeated Drew McIntyre in 9-12 by pinfall with a swanton bomb. This got a B-74. Jeff and Drew have good chemistry and that showed with a fairly decent rating. No skill improvements to be shown and the negatives are all going to be for Jeff's habits. So apart from that, that could have possibly, if Jeff was straight edge, maybe been a B. One thing to think about. After Hardy picks up the win, CM Punk is on the Titan Tron. Jeff, 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 you just won't go away. I defeated you and you ended your brother's career. Why are you still here? Why why not just leave the company for good? Go see a rehab facility, help you, help your brother, get away from all of this and save yourself. Not just from the drugs, the substances, the alcohol, but from me. Because if you don't leave WWE, then trust me, I will force you out the door, whether you like it or not. So Punk with a promo there, just warning CM Punk, uh, sorry, Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy that this isn't over and that he is just going to force him out of the company. Probably in B plus 89 segment, continues their storyline. Could have been even better for another full crowd, but very, very happy with that. Ah, uh, I'm ask this here. We see Big Show and Chris Jericho in the locker room talking over the game plan. Somehow I've put in the Brian Kendrick, because that's next to the Big Show. But it should really just be Jericho and Big Show hyping up for the, the main event. So C plus 69, made Jericho look good. Uh, would have scored a lot better if it was the Big Show, no doubt. So, small error there. But the main event match delivers. And about to feature great action and great heat from the audience. The Undertaker and Christian defeated Jericho in 1816 when Christian defeated Chris Jericho by pinfall with a kill switch. Great chemistry also between Jericho. Um, it says that Stryker and Styles work extremely well, but the quality wasn't up to the standard of the match. It's not a good B82. Um, we definitely have plans for Christian now, that's why he's getting this mini push. Um, and a good victory there. Uh, Undertaker improves technical and performance. Big Show improves his flying skills, somehow. Dirt Sheet will just have everybody holding back. Taker's low morale, 
Jericho's drinking. Big Show's inconsistency. The common trick of even put that up even higher. But it's still a good match. A good way to end the show. B81. And the show increases our popularity in four regions. We'll just have a wee quick look and see if we've got any decent ratings. We'll have a look at that in a second. Let's get ECW. Was either loved or hate. Smackdown was liked by the vast majority. Ric Flair has won the best manager in the world, Random Award, the way they present that in February, but as well as. Um, emails went down to a 0 0.39 from a 0 0.43, so we'll have to rebrand uh, NXT. Um, but, uh, sorry, ECW to NXT. That's still an okay rating. Nothing spectacular there, and my decision is just for sending Christopher Daniels for some reason. Uh, probably elevate people. Yeah, on his if I if I change any, anything, I can easily put them as a as a heel if need be. Exchanging a couple of the TV deals, mostly just um, SmackDown. There's a couple of Raw ones as well, but it's mostly just those two. Um, and hopefully, get them sorted out within the next week. Apart from that, size pretty decent. We're looking okay. Everything seems to be in reasonable level. Just need to keep improving everything and we'll be on the right track. And yeah, we're just heading towards the Elimination Chamber that is scheduled in for us the last week. The third week of February, so another two weeks build. And then we'll be heading on towards WrestleMania with a five week build. So that is it for this episode guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like if you get any comments regarding what you've seen on SmackDown or any of the NXT ECW angles. Let me know on that as well. And until next time, it's 21 Maxwell. I'll speak to you all. Real soon. Bye-bye.